All right, what's going on everybody? This is Mike over at Vape It Up and welcome to vlog number three. Let's get it going. All right, all right, like I said, this is Mike and this is vlog number three, the firmware. So as you can see in the titles, I'm gonna try to keep that going and obviously I'll be talking about firmware at some point in this podcast, but first, what I'm vaping on. Right now I have my Skelly 150TC, Authentic Twisted Messes version one, not the square. I'll post a picture of the coil up in the corner right now, but this is, what did I do, what did I build? This is, okay, it's a, it's a Clapton with 36 outer and dual 28 core and the cores are nichrome. I did five wraps on what looks to be a 2.5 millimeter and I got it to a 0.18 and I am actually vaping. I have a little sinus going on on a watermelon mint juice that I had a buddy make for me at 56 watts. It's not very powerful. It's, you know, just something. But it is helping. It does help clear my clear my face. And it ain't that bad. Let's get that out of the way. But as always, I'm drinking a water and as well as a woodchuck gumption. One of my favorite, favorite drinks of all time. It's quite beautiful. It's a apple cider. It's a hard cider. And it's not like the Reds, to me, that's overly sweet, the Orchard that's overly tart. This is just nice. Right in the middle, you get that little bit of, of almost bitterness in there. It's, it's absolutely delicious. I highly recommend picking up anything from Woodchuck. It is good. Oh, and hold on. Whoa, that's cool. Anyway, this vlog here, vlog number three, is actually brought to you by Buku Vapor. Buku Vapor is an online juice seller and also an actual B&M in Shreveport, Louisiana. I highly, highly recommend checking them out. I love all their juice. I love everything about them. I love the shirts, love the beanies, the hats. I got a tank band somewhere around here that I think one of my kids got a hold of because I left it on my desk. Either way, go check them out. I'm going to have their logo up here for the remainder of the vlog. I'm also going to have the website down in the description. So go check them out. Order some juice. What's cool is for this, they gave me shipping code. Well, the I guess a coupon code. Ship Mike, and you're going to get free shipping on anything that you order. And don't forget to check out their flavors of the week. They pick two flavors and they cut every size of it, the cost in half. So if you get uh, 60 bucks for a 120 normally, it's gonna be 30 bucks. And don't forget, ship Mike, because this podcast, this vlog, I wanna do podcasts, but because of this vlog, you ship Mike and you will get free shipping on your order. So don't forget to check them out. Also, um, I have decided a Monday and Friday release. So twice a week, I'll be posting up a vlog. So that's gonna be exciting. That's how it's gonna go from here on out. So, uh, I actually did record a quick little thing earlier in the day. Let's go ahead and play that right now. I am currently back in my Jeep. It is fixed, kind of, from um, the first vlog, the breakdown. So, what happened was, what happened was, I was wrong whenever I said uh, power steering. I had a power steering problem a few months ago, so I just automatically thought that it was actually a transmission line that it didn't necessarily pop or anything, it just kind of came off, um, which was an issue. It wasn't like it was just a ring clamp around it. It was a threaded, I guess you could say male piece, and then the hose screwed onto it. What happened is my mechanic said that it came off. Didn't unscrew, it came off. So the threads were all all janky. So that all had to get replaced, which wasn't that bad. I paid 60 bucks, so no biggie. 
Although I do have a leak in my differential, I believe it was. Either way, I went to another place that my mechanic said I, I would take my vehicle there, good price, all that kind of stuff. So that can take about three hours to repair here in the next couple days and about 80 bucks. So no complaints, no complaints overall. So eh, could be worse could definitely be worse but either way that's a quick update on the Jeep as you might be able to see from time to time I got my youngest back here I'm currently at the school where I pick up my oldest and it is about five minutes before we'll start moving so I wanted to record a little bit it's a nice day it is 84 degrees but there's a nice breeze you might be able to hear it you can hear cars going by just roll the windows down turn it off just relax why not but so yeah, that's a little update from uh, the first vlog with the breakdown. So I'll be recording with the new camera setup at home later. Probably tonight. It is currently Wednesday, so I can get everything done and get it uploaded uh, for Friday. So I want to be doing vlogs every Monday and Friday. I think that'll be a good format. Cover what happens on the weekend, cover what happens during the week be getting more news product releases all that kind of stuff but one quick thing since I do see them coming out so I got to finish this up in a minute is what is an RDA a mod a juice something that you've wanted for a while you just haven't jumped on maybe because of price availability whatever it may be let me know in the comments below mine is the Petrie version 2 the dot mod atomizer I really want one of those things and I want it in black with the gold and it seems to be sold out everywhere I can find the red one I can find different colors but I cannot find in stock the black with the gold with the with the tip and everything so I'm having some trouble finding that I am looking to I guess I'm gonna spend in that you know 90 to 120 range after everything's all said and done with shipping and whatnot, but I really want one of those. I've been wanting one for a while. Well, since the uh, 1.5 was out, I've been wanting one. Now the version two, which of course makes me kind of say, why don't I just wait and then get the 2.5 or the three or whatever's next. But then if we all followed that trend, that's all we would be doing is we'd be sitting and not getting something because of the fact that Oh, the new one's gonna come out. Oh, this is gonna this. This is gonna that. There are certain products that that doesn't happen. Like I think my usual ADV mild day vape setup, the Wismic RX 200. I doubt they're gonna. What are they gonna do? Come out with a four battery one, a 250 watt. I know they have the DNA, so I don't think there's a whole lot of room for improvement right now, other than just their firmware upgrades, which seems to be a really popular and. I would almost say budget friendly thing. Sure, you may spend a little bit more on a device that has the firmware upgrades over time, but it's kind of like getting a new mod every couple months, uh, depending on the features. Say if right now I have the 3.0 software, I haven't updated it to the new one that I think was just released, but even then it's not a major change, so you know. But whenever something comes out where, let's say it, it jumps up to 250 not that I use 200 but if it jumps up to 250 watts with an added mode you know say if it does the it does do temperature memory by uh, three settings but say if it comes out with like five settings like the IPv3 introduced that would be really cool that's something I used a lot with my IPv3 and whenever I bust it out I use it with it as well I'll say okay check it out I'm a vape on my TFV4 for a while so I'm gonna set one at 100 watts Okay, I also have my blitz with this build, so I'm gonna set that at, at 126 watts and all that. So whatever, uh, something with the firmware upgrade, I always think it's worth it. We're not gonna have to do that typical, oh, gotta buy a new one, gotta buy a new one. Just upgrade it later and it's almost like a new mod. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and cut this quick little part out. I'm at five minutes. Don't think I'm gonna cut much of it, but I gotta get driving. So I will see y'all on the new setup right now. All right, so now that you've seen that, let's go ahead and get on to what I want to be the main topic of this vlog, as the title may say. I want to get about on to firmware updates. There's a lot of mods that don't have them available, and there's also a lot of mods now that do. 
I have two mods sitting in front of me, one of which is the Segeli 150. No firmware updates. The way you buy it is the way it's going to stay. And then the Wismic, the RX 200. It, with that one, it's already on version 3. I believe there's a 3.1 out, just haven't checked it out like I said earlier in that earlier, earlier thing. And I kind of touched on firmware updates there, but I do want to get into that a little bit more. Some of this may be a repeat of what I said then, and that's fine. But I want to say advantages of firmware updates. You get more value for your money in the long run. If you go get, like I did, a Segeli 150TC, and you know later as you go, you're like, man, I'd really like to be able to use titanium or I'd really like to be able to use stainless steel. You cannot do it for temperature. You can't, you just can't. It's nickel. That's all it's gonna read, that's all it's ever gonna read. That's how it's gonna be. Kinda sucks now that these new wires are getting out there as temp control and I love titanium wire. Just right off the bat, love using the titanium coils in my, the Evic Tron little setup. I love using it in that. That's a perfect driving around doing what you got to do whenever you know that battery life is going to be a problem but size is also going to be as well so I do use that one quite a bit whenever I'm driving around if, if it's with the kids and doing all that kind of stuff and with the Segeli 150 TC I cannot use those coils simply because it doesn't support titanium now if you look at something like the Evic Mini, the, the newer ones, the Tron. Well, it's same same base, it's just different tank. But either way, they sold it to something new. With that, I have upgraded them many times. It's incredibly easy. They make it easy to do. What's cool about it is whenever I first started rolling out firmware version three, it was great. It worked for a while, and then all of a sudden, in temperature mode, no matter what it was it would all of a sudden just drop, boom, to like four or five watts and stay there. You would never get over four or five watts. Why that is, I don't know. But I decided, let's try and downgrade to the two version two software. And I was honestly very surprised to find out that I could. And to me, that is very important because I have my iPhone right here. That's my lens cap. I'm iPhone. I just downloaded 9.3 a day or two ago. If this software version sucks, what can we do? Nothing. We can't do a damn thing about it. And that's stupid. I wish that we could go backwards if we felt that we needed to, but we cannot. With a lot of these, I haven't tried it on the Wismic to downgrade, but I do know that on Joytech products you can downgrade and that's going to be anything that they run and that's cool I really really like that that is definitely a big advantage and I want to talk about the disadvantages of firmware upgrades to me one of the biggest is on the shop side of things if somebody gets a mod and they spend I don't know hundred dollars on that device as a shop, you want repeat customers. Now, of course, they're going to be going back for juice, batteries, charger, you know, all that good stuff. But it's going to take them a lot longer now to need to spend money on a new mod. Now, if they want to, that's a different thing. And on the flip side of this, it's also a great thing. So it's a little bit of both of advantage and disadvantage as the consumer definitely that's amazing. It truly is, hey, why don't you just spend the extra 30 bucks, get this. You're not going to have to spend much later because it upgrades after a while. You can bring it in. You can do the upgrade. I'll, we'll do the upgrade for you. That's an amazing thing. So disadvantage, I really think it's just going to turn into the business side. And maybe, I haven't seen it happen yet. I haven't heard of any issues yet. Is it causing the boards to malfunction in some way? possibly to the point where it just won't work anymore. I haven't seen it, but it's technology. It's bound to happen one of these days. So, you know, take it as you will. It's cool. I already talked about my favorite firmware is the IPv3. Love the hell out of that firmware. I love that. That is my old reliable device. 
I think everybody's got one that they had that ran great. Eventually they upgraded from it, but for some reason they keep going, yeah, I, I need to vape on you. And it's just as good as the day that you put it down. And then you start using it for a while, and then you put it down, and then you do it again. And it's always going to be that same mod. And so to me, it's the IPv3. I did a, I did kind of modify mine a little bit. I took out the screws. I, I drilled out, put magnets. So now it's a magnetic back opposed to the screws. So I did that. But other than that, that thing still runs like a champ. I can. I, it's the best ohm reader that I think I've ever used as well. So I actually keep that with me at all times whenever I need to do a build. Quick check. Cool. Got my resistance. But let's go ahead and get on to the next thing. All right, and that next thing, I want to take a look at something that I saw earlier today on vaping360.com, and it's an exclusive preview of the iJoy Tornado Tank. Now, at first I was just like, ah, a tank. It looks like the Disney font on the inside, while it looks like something else on the outside. I'll post a link in the description so you can go check this out. And then I was like, okay, whatever, yada yada, and then I saw a picture. I saw a picture of the deck, and holy shit, this thing looks like it's set, it's a velocity style deck, the airflow is going to come from the bottom, but then there's an attachment, let's, let's uh, look at this a little bit, so F5 specs incoming, so they play with the tornado lingo. Before I get into more details and give you some impressions, it's time to bombard you with specs, and I'm going to do the same to you. 24 millimeter diameter, 17.8 millimeter deck. That's a big deck, no pun intended. Dirty bastards. Here's what's cool: five mil tank and a direct contact 24 plated 510 connection. And um, real easy to explain: the build deck with the post coming off of it. There's a there's a long 24 karat gold plated little piece coming down that goes through your 510 thread and that is your contact, so it is literally direct contact. It's got a wide board Delrin drip tip. It's going to have side and lock gasket for top side filling. Really not a like a top side filling guy, but go look at this, the pictures, holy crap. That actually looks good. It, it does seem to have a locking function of sorts. A peak insulator and a four hole and six hole deck. It's gonna include both, so you can just switch them out. That's crazy uh, let's let's go down just a little bit more prepare for trouble make it double it's the twin decks it's a twister here's another crazy thing according to the manufacturer the iJoy tornado can handle up to not 200 not 220 not 250 300 watts who in the hell has a 300 watt device at the moment that's what I'm wondering. It's freaking crazy. But with 300 watts, I'm sure you can get it to work, but why? Of course, because we can. Because why not? Because 300 watts. Fuck it. But who knows? And they go on to say something that I actually think is funny. I feel bad for the poor sap that vaped. The iJord Tornado at 350 passed out and later told his boss, yeah, we, we better leave it at 300. I like that. I think that is absolutely hilarious. I do like the fact that it's got a 5 mil tank. And if you're doing 300 watts, that's still going to go by like the like the moonshot from Sigeli. Just instantly, you're going to be out of juice. It, it, this article does go more in depth overall. I couldn't find exactly whenever it's going to be coming out, so, you know, we'll be on the lookout. It kind of made me small, swallow my uh, words from Vlog1, saying that I kind of think this year has sucked so far. I should have just waited a week, week and a half, and here we are. I will definitely be getting my hands on one of these using the six-hole build deck. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. So, next thing that I want to get to is a phone call. 
is, oh yeah, Grim Green, Ruby Roo, big shout out to you. Didn't mean for that to rhyme, but either way, I have listened to Freeze and, and Mooch, I've listened to multiple different vaping podcasts, and none of them really, I guess you could say, tickled my fancy. None of them were what I wanted. They were all about, oh, drama this, drama that, or, hey, promote this, promote that, hey, me this, me that. And finally, I saw that Grim Green and Ruby Rue were pairing up for a podcast, and I was excited. And after two episodes, they're now on iTunes, they have their website. The website will be linked below, and you can go wherever you need to from there. They do have the SoundCloud uh, file thingies there so you can listen to it from the website or if you're like me have an iPhone and you love the podcast app you just go listen to them on there now and that's what I'll be doing both of these were over an hour and 14 minutes the first one was an hour 14 39 seconds and then the second one is an hour 25 49 they said they're gonna be putting them out on Mondays definitely 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 something to be looking for listening to I love it I've listened to both episodes it's cool. They talk about a little bit of everything. They jumble around. If you've watched the videos that they're both in it, where they actually talk about something, but it's a lot of joking around as well, it's that perfect blend of that. And shout out to them. I'll throw this around on, on you, Sir Grim, and uh, consider yourself shouted out. You too, Ruby Roo. You too. So, I'm really, really excited. That is something that I've wanted for a while. Hell, I've even looked into how to make one myself just to make it what I want but either way let's get on to the segment I wanted to talk about and it's what the reddit all right so on this inaugural what the reddit I was trying to think of what to call it and I was like like what the fuck yeah what the reddit let's do that this comes from electronic cigarette and it says my dad peed in my juice I'll read this one for you as well as I can. This was posted by Omega Tigbitties. Shout it out. And what he says. So this all happened today. My mom cleaned my room, and he, he says that he is 18 and male. Found my vape pen and gave it to my dad to destroy. And then he shows a picture, which I, I've clicked on all of these, but go check for yourselves. It's, this is hilarious. It's worth it. Now I texted him about it, and here are the texts. And more links, three links. Now I know I was being a smartass, but he's the same way. Now after reading and texting him, or texted him, I realized something. I had an issue where about a week ago, my juice tasted like piss. And here's the link to my post in this sub, and he links it. Just wanted to share this with you. I'm livid right now and don't know what to do. Knowing that I lost my Kanger Subbox Mini and my Horizon Arctic Tank and $20 in juice, along with the fact that I vaped my own father's piss. Here's the best part. Too long didn't read? Vape my dad's piss. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely hilarious. The images, yeah, his dad definitely beat the hell out of this. The text, I'm not going to go through and read them all, but... The, link that he put, he put, help please, I got a new tank after my old one linked, and now something is not right. As the title stated, I got a brand new Horizon Arctic tank to go with my Kanger sub tank mini. I threw in the .5 ohm coil, went to grab my juice. Since I haven't vaped in about a week, my juice just sat there, and it looked more liquidy than normal. Continued to fill my tank, soaked the wick, took a hit. What the fuck? The taste I was getting was a mix of dog piss and grape, which was the flavor. And no clouds came out. I tried again and again, gagging at the taste, but to no avail. What's going on? First comment, sounds like your dog pissed in your juice. Little did he know that that was his father. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. I love Reddit. I'm always on Reddit. And that, yeah, it was it was just absolutely hilarious. I will be posting a link to the, the original one, the one where it says my dad peed in my juice. The second one that I read was his first post initially. Go check it out. It's absolutely worth reading because the text messages make it all. The dad beats it with a hammer and he's like, well, guess they just don't make them like they used to. Damn Chinese or something along those lines. Shit is hilarious. But yeah, again, 
this episode of the vlog, this this vlog, vlog three, the firmware is brought to you by Buku Vapor. Don't forget to go check them out. Use the code SHIPMIKE for free shipping. Let them know that that uh, the vlog from Vape It Up sent you. That'd be awesome. Also, flavor of the week from Buku, big time. Two flavors every week, released every Monday. You get half off that juice, and you can use the code SHIPMIKE for free shipping. I also want to firmware. Let me know what mod and what firmware that you are running. Let me know if it's something that you like, something that you don't like. What are your thoughts on firmware updating? The RTA, the iJoy Tornado, we'll see what happens. Culture of Clouds, check them out. They are on iTunes as well as SoundCloud and I'm sure other things, but those are the only two that I've checked. And what the Reddit, go check it out. Other than that, I will toast to you. I will vape to you. As long as you promise to keep vaping it up. Now check y'all later, everybody. Be looking for vlog four on Monday.